Hey everyone, it is time for Gadget Talk. I am so excited. We're actually going to be getting into a bill tonight. But before we do that, hey, I just want to welcome everybody to being here tonight. Uh, Chad, welcome as you as well because you got the work to do tonight. Yes, yes, I'm excited. <laughs> So, but before we get into the build, we got to take care of a little bit of business and we need to talk about patron Patreon. So if you'd like to become a patron, uh, go over to the patron link right here, this brand new heart that is on the geocache talk website. And you click on that and it will take you to become a patron on Patreon. So, and you start as little as $3, $5, six, uh, $8. And it also goes up to, uh, the gold ammo can, which is $10, so you can go there. And now remember, if you become a patron at any level, you will also receive the now famous Blackout Coin. So go over there and check it out. Uh, really appreciate it. And then also we have to talk about our sponsor for tonight, who is Logwork, the creators of the fantastic logbook made with genuine write-in-the-rain paper. The logbook's designed for the microcontainers of the present and future, geared towards the hider who would rather go caching than doing cash maintenance. Find them at logwork.com. So, all right, Chad, tell us what we got going on tonight. So tonight we're going to be building um, a very simple Arduino-based uh, LED light decryptor. So it's going to be a flashing light uh, decipher um, system. So it'll actually be a very simple. We'll kind of go over the build. Um, some of the parts will actually be fairly quick to build and then we'll go over a little bit of the of the coding for it okay. and for those who want to build this uh after the show tonight you can actually go down to the link and uh, download the code off of the uh the link to the to this so right. it'll be on the, the it'll be on the build page give us just about 30 minutes or so for me to get it up there but it will be on there and then if you want to get the parts as well there are the Amazon affiliate links are all on there as well so you can just go right there and click the links and get your stuff for it okay great well thank you um, so let's um, I guess start out here um, very simple so we'll just get going here so we'll go over some parts we need here let's go right to the build cam okay so we're gonna build this using um, a couple of different things. So we need three LEDs. Uh, well, you can do four. You can so in the program or in the code for this, um, you can use three to four depending on how big your lock your lock is. And I just picked up three of them here, just a red, blue, and green LED that are pre-wired. And the nice thing about tonight's build is we can actually um, use the tinned ends that came with the, the the LEDs came with. So you don't have to do any soldering on this build that's great uh, yeah <laughs> so and then um we need a uh a four uh double a battery holder okay there an arduino nano let's see if it plug okay and the ones i put on the page there that we have the link to were actually pre-soldered as well so if you don't if you cannot solder or don't have the options to solder or means um, they actually come pre-soldered with all the pins in them. So you don't have, you just have to take it out of the box and upload the code to it. Right. Uh, and those are great. Have, yes. I, I like them. And then we have a terminal board here for them, uh, as well. So, and the, the nano will actually slide right into the terminal board and then you just have to put the batteries in. You'll be ready to go. So all right. really simple. So this will go fairly quick at the beginning. All right. You'll probably um, want to slide that up just a little bit. Oh, yeah. Thank you. There you go. So if you see on here, let me see if I can find something to point with. All of your pins here that's on your Nano, if I have it sitting the right way. Yep. Put the right way, D. Um, you see here where it says, get out of the screen. Well, we'll go up here. The VIN uh, in right. the ground. So this is the power in. The VIN is the power in, and then this is your ground. So that all actually matches what you have here on your ter terminal board. So these actually hook together. And if you look on the back, you can actually see how the PCB is all laid out. So how it actually hooks. So just so people know. So when we're talking about on your nano, um, what uh, pin to use or pin out, um, that's what we're talking about. It should match. So, right. And um, if it doesn't match, you got the wrong board. Yes. More than likely. Yes. Um, so first thing we're going to do now, remember on, on these ones that I have, these LEDs, 
and get that out of the way. Um, the colored wire is the negative, and the black wire is the positive on this. So Which our, is completely opposite than any way, especially on the red and black one, completely yeah. opposite than what we all think of. Yes. <laughs> exactly. So, and that's, I wouldn't, if I was wiring them, pre-wiring them, I would not do them that way, but. No, but. Whoever did them, thought that would be best. Um, so what we're going to do is take then, and I almost did this wrong, just as we were talking about it, I just mentioned how. See, it, it's it's counterintuitive. <laughs> yeah, I would never wire anything like that, but that's just me. Um, we're going to take all the grounds, which are the colored wires, and we're actually just going to twist them together. Now, typically, I would solder these as well, but since we're going to do this without having to solder, um, let's see here. I'll see if I'm in focus. Almost. It's getting there. <laughs> I think it's so thin, it's not one to focus yeah, on. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. Anyways, we're going to twist the wires together. So hopefully that won't be a problem for you to do. So we're getting these wires twisted. That way we can just put them into one terminal. Is that correct? Correct. This is going to go on your ground terminal board, So, which we're going to go right here. So the, the um, pinouts we're going to use on our project today are gonna to be A1, A2, A3, and A4. I'm sorry, A, we're gonna go A2, A3, A4, and A5. So it's the analog okay. terminals there that we're actually gonna use. And All then right. our ground. And then there's a, gra there's a graphic of what we're gonna be using tonight too. Let me see, I'm sorry, I was wrong. This board is backwards side okay. uh, of this. You, oh yeah, there you go. Oh. I forgot I, I forgot about that. Yeah, so yeah, the so Arduino we, board pinout here uh, is what we're going to use. So we have our ground and our on our VIN on the on the uh, left side there. That's going to actually be our our ground and our power in from our batteries, and then we're going to have our ground on the right hand side. That's going to ground out our LEDs, and then we're going to go our positive to the D two, D three, and D four, and then D five is an option if you want to do four LEDs instead of three. It all depends on how many digits your lock has or or whatever. Okay. Uh, you're using. So All uh, right. thanks for pulling that up. Um, so what we're going to do is go here to the ground here next to the D2. And of course, we got to loosen up our terminals here. And sometimes these terminals can be a pain to get some of these wires into sometimes. So just be aware of that. Everybody that's watching. Tom um, says, put the wires on a coin to focus. So I got this new coin, this cashing with kids coin. Oh, Let's that's see. a good looking coin. Yeah, that's a great looking coin. Yeah, it actually did did work pretty good. Thanks, Tom. Interesting, yeah. Always always good advice from the chat. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, put in the grounds to the terminal blocks here. Tighten them down, make sure they're snug. And then you have to, you can do this two different ways. If you know what color, if you have a certain color you want to have in these, in these uh, digital outputs here, um, you can either put those in first and then do your grounds, or you can figure out which one leads from the, the uh, LED and then figure that out. So in my case, red's going to be D2. Okay. <laughs> Dar Dara Wolf says uh, Tom is such a puzzle solver. Yes, that's right. He should probably yeah. do a podcast on something like that. Yeah, he should. I mean, who knows? Do something called like puzzle talk or something like that. Yeah, that's a good idea. We should pitch that. Yeah, we should talk about it. Also, see uh, Tricassius is in the house tonight in the chat. Oh, so, nice. And he's going to be going to kind of give it a little as Chad's put, hooking these wires up. Tricassius is going to be with us next week on Gadget Talk, and we're going to be talking to him about some some of his gadgets and everything. Yeah, I'm excited for that uh, interview next week. That's going to be fun. And he's out of northern Minnesota, or the, that's where the caches are. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, Gilby around that area. Yeah. Gilby. So uh, Tom wants to know what magnification cheaters do you recommend to wear when working on these things? Um, <laughs> I personally wear like. Um, I think it's a magnification of like four, five, something like that. When I'm doing these, um, I don't I put, know. I put a link of, for those in, in, in our gadget talk page too. 
<laughs> yeah, I use a big, a really, you can't, I guess you can't see my hand gestures. Um, I use a really big, um, you know, magnification with a light on it deal that hooks to the desk when I'm working on these. This I'm not because this is actually big enough for me to see at this point. But um, there are a lot of things like when I'm soldering all the pins down here, I have to, I can't do that by eye. I have to look through a magnifier. A Tricashi says he's in North Dakota. Oh, North Dakota. Okay. Uh, Tom, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, there should be some, uh, shouldn't do this anything electronical, electrical without adult supervision. So I guess you're going to be out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we have, this is how simple this is. We have our LEDs <laughs> already connected to this. They may be, uh, Charles. I, I believe they may be. Uh, Tom's eyes may be slightly older than than mine, so he may need more ma magnification. But I also wear contacts, so uh, so I if I didn't have my contacts, it would be even worse. <laughs> um, yeah, I have to wear my glasses. It's crazy. Um, so next, we're gonna go ahead and loosen up our our ground and our VIN, which is our power in or positive okay. in in your ground terminal blocks here. So I shouldn't block it. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and hook up without the batteries in the holder. Let's go ahead and hook this up. And this time, black is the ground. Yes, that's <laughs> correct. Yes. <laughs> Just those silly LEDs. That's yeah, this, this crazy, crazy LEDs. You know what I thought would be fun with this is if you could make one flash fairly quick or something and you had a, actually a UV LED and you had it next to something, but you would have to read it fairly quick for it to actually see what the code is. On oh, the, you know, cool. on, on a, uh, whatever that is, the UV light or pen code. Yeah, that would be cool. That would be really so neat. So one thing I did want to show is if you have bigger wires or you want to use something bigger, this is a terminal block here too as well for a nano but you can see, let me grab a different terminal block here, the difference in the size of the connectors. So, so you can actually, and it's a little bit skinnier, so it may fit in an ammo can, one of the plastic ones, a little bit better. All right, so as before anybody else says it, I'm going to say it. Tom, there's the, the, the block for you. There's the terminal board for you. Yeah. <laughs> this is, I just got these, and I'm actually looking forward to using the big ones. Okay, so now we have... Everything connected here. Let me pull out here a little bit with the camera. Um, everything is connected. So we got our, our three LEDs. Okay. Um, we got our terminal board here, and then we have our batteries. Okay. So next thing we're going to do is we probably should go over to programming the, the Arduino. So we have our nano here, and I don't put this in until before I put the batteries in. I put it in right before the batteries. But um, let's go ahead and go over and look at our programming here real quick of okay. this so i got it there we go okay and i'm gonna go ahead and make that a little bit bigger yeah, for everybody so we bigger. can see it so um in fact i can increase let me know if this helps let us know in the chat if that looks better that looks better to me okay. so me too <laughs> so um pull my keyboard next to me so this is the program you can actually, you'll be able to download um, later on today, tonight. Um, so at the very top here, you can see how we have the LED one um, here uh, is in pin number two, is in D2. Okay. And we can actually comment. So if you have a certain color you want to have on there, um, we can actually comment it out by using two forward slashes. Um and then just type in what other, whatever color it is. And okay. that will actually add a comment without adding anything to the code so you can remember what it is. So um, I have... So it's two ahead. forward slashes, and then you can make a comment, and it's not going to affect anything in the code. So Correct. just anybody that's watching, that's kind of the little cheat thing in there for you. Yeah, and so it's a good way to make... It's pretty much you make notes. Um, so you don't forget things um, or if you change something and you may want to change it back in the future You can always make notes or comment out a command if you want to as well um, Let 
All right. So good thing we have Dave with us on here tonight. So if there's any technical questions. Yeah, if there's any technical questions, we're going to uh, defer to Dave and uh, we'll send you the link here in, in short, very shortly, Dave. That's right. Um, <laughs> okay. And so we have our LEDs here. So LED one is in the pin uh, D2. Okay. Here. And then LED two is in pin D3, which is the blue one. And then LED three is in pin four, which is green. And then if you look here, um, I commented out the fourth LED. So if you take those comments away, those forward slashes, it actually adds that back to the, the program. So it's going to try, it's going to run that. Uh, All right. There. So real quick, uh, Tom is asking, what's the name of the language code that we're using for this program? And it is C++. Yes. So if I had four here, and you can do any color you want. There's so many different colors of LEDs you can get. I would do, our fourth color is yellow on here. But since I'm not going to run four, I didn't hook up four. I'm just going to go ahead and comment that out. And if you see it actually graze it out there. Um, right, okay. And uh, so then it actually won't be part of the code. Uh, we'd actually have to add here our pin mode. Um, sorry, I'm not a fast typer. That's fine. And what Chad's doing here is just adding the the code. Very simple, saying that that would be a output as well. The LED four, which would be D five, would be the actual pin. So he's just kind of defining it out right there. Right. So that the, right here, my computer is going slow. Okay. Um, yes, because I only had three LEDs in there. I didn't call out a fourth one. So, and what we're going to do is go ahead and comment that out since we're not going to use it. So oh, as you're seeing, we, you could have the multiple LEDs and there is, um, I mean, if you, I think, there's a D6 and a little bit further up. So you could do the same thing if you wanted to have more lights on there that could even just be red herrings if you wanted them ha have those. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You can you can put several lights on there, as many as you can on there. I think you can do um, tw 11 or 12 Okay. if you wanted to. So, in fact, that that's I have that on a couple caches where there's several lights, but they only have to count certain colors, and then, but they flash randomly. So a yellow and then a red and then a green and then yellow may flash again. And they only have to count the yellow, but there are several flashes in between. Okay. Um, okay. So um, now we're going to go to our um, LED flashing. So right now I have the LED one, which I can actually comment in here, which is red. If I want to remember what this is. I can always type in red. Okay. And I believe the uh, this is blue. That one's blue, and the other one Another is one's green. green. So if you, again, if you need to remember, and this is completely up to you, um, then that's a good way to do it. And that's just saying what it is. So this is actually fairly simple. Um, so we have LED one here. And high means it's going to the highest point it can go on the Arduino, which on this one here is uh, five volts. Okay. Um, so it's sending that signal to the highest on high. So that means it's, the LED will be on. And then LED one low means it's off. It's no power. So that's what's going to okay. make it flash, right? It's going to send it power and then and then it will take the power away. Right. And the you have delay a delay. Go ahead. Sorry. You have the delay yeah. of a thousand. The delay here of 1,000 is one second. So every 1,000th is a second. So if I go 5,000, that's a five, five second delay. So right now it would be on for five seconds. And then right now LED one low would be off, off for a tenth of a second, right? Right. Or if I do 1,000, it'd be off for, for one, one second. second. Um, and this is where you can mess with it as much as you want. Um, and on LED two is the same thing. So they all work the same. And right now I only have one on and off on them. Um, but what you need to do to make the code work. So say you need the red to flash eight times. You want, you know, your code to be uh, eight, five, three or something like that. Red okay. would have to turn on and off eight times. Blue would have to be five and green would have to be three. So the easiest way for me to do this is to copy this. So you hit control C 
and then I'll just go down here and hit Control V and paste it. And so um, I gotta clean this up. So that's tell now that's gonna flash twice. Okay. The LED. So it'll flash once for five seconds, off for one second, on for five, and off for one. Um, now, if you really want to mess with people, you can go down to one second on on the second flash of the red. Um, and so it actually go faster on the second flash. And you can adjust that as much as you want. Um, <laughs> I like to do that. I think that's I think that's fun. Yeah, it makes it. Yeah. And uh, got a comment in here. It says, uh, yes, he does. And they are so fun trying to count, then recount, then recount, then recount a few more times before giving up because it's not working with your count number. <laughs> yes. Phone calls yeah. time now. <laughs> Lori Seebeck tribe. She finds a lot of my cash. In fact, I saw her the other day at a couple of them. And uh, yeah, it's, they're extremely fun. To, yeah. Well, they're fun for me to watch people find them and fun for me to watch people get frustrated. But uh, <laughs> Yeah, so um, she, she was saying again, uh, no, seriously, his caches are, uh, talk about your caches are awesome to do. Not always a phone call to figure out what I did wrong. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of times on the flashes, they'll be off by one di one digit on one of the colors. Um, so, um, so right there, now you can add this, so you can copy and paste this eight times. Oops. out in here oh, yeah. i got clean that code up that doesn't look good at all. now when it does the code will it do the red completely first and then it goes to the next color or will it so that's what i was showing here but we could actually take this away i i wish i had the extra uh usb port to actually download this and show you the example um that we're actually putting up here um but um What's wrong here? So this one will be just kind of all the yeah, reds I, will blink so many times and then it'll go back in. Yes. And so I was going to show that right here on this. And um, we could actually. So right now I have all the reds. I copied and paste these. So it was going on one. And one reason why I like to do this red on here is it, I can count them and know how many times it's supposed to flash. So right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven right now. So say if red wanted to be seven, we could yep. actually add a comment here equals seven, add to the comment. So we know what the, the code is going to be. Because there's so many times I've done all kinds of flashing LED uh, uh, caches. But I, when I go to reprogram it, if the board goes bad or make a new one, I don't remember which one's which or what the code was exactly. So it's kind of nice. Right. And that's what those comments are. Those are the comments for the, the programmer themselves to figure out um, this little notes as you're going through it. Because if you're doing a lot of these, you're not going to remember it all the time. Yes. And if you have a memory like me, you'll never remember it. <laughs> so our red will flash. Um, say we'll say this code is 711 or 711. Um, okay. this is what the code would be. Um, you it, can change, you can get you can put this one at a, a convenience store and go get yourself a Slurpee. Yes, there you go. Just don't don't tell HQ, you can't can't mention. Uh, well, it's it's not your, uh, yeah, exactly. It, <laughs> can't mention 711 mention in, the, in the description, but yes, um. So that's a really simple one. Now, I don't typically, I have a couple like this that actually you just have to count all the reds, all the blues, all the greens. And again, this goes down to where I'm putting them. How long do you want someone actually, their experience to be finding right. the cash? And um, if it's at a, a facility or, or at a business, how long do they want someone there to find it? If they want someone there as long as, as you know, they can, you know, they don't care if people are sitting there trying to figure it out, then what I would do is mix it up. So I would end up going in here and flashing things at, at different times. So I would go ahead and, um, boy, I wish I had a way to download this. So what you would do is go in and say like every other red or be like red, blue, green, blue, green, blue, red. Right like something like that, just kind of do a combination of it. It's still having the seven, 
but just slipping them in different places in there. Yes, that's that's correct. I wonder if I unmute okay. the mic for a second and download this code if it would put my mic back up. So that's really cool. I like how that would do that. Now, anybody else in the chat, let us know. Have you how are you is everybody understanding how this is going right now in the code itself? Um, and if not, we'll give you Dave Wagner's uh, email for you. Um, <laughs> yeah, they can send me a question <laughs> if they have one. But um, I know how to write these basic programs, but I'm not a genius at them at all. So um, I could only answer basic questions. Um, so one, once you have the code here, just to show real quick, once you have the code here um, in, you're going to want to compile it. And so compiling is going to mean it's going to go through the code and make sure everything's working right. Okay. So up here at the very top of the program, there's a check mark. Right. And so we're going to click on that. And at the very bottom at the, the sketch here, you can see it says compiling sketch right here. Um, and so it's looking at the sketch. And, and you sure can see the little green bar on the right, right as it goes through it. Mm -hmm. And then we'll say done compiling. So everything looks like it's working good so far. That's always a good thing. And then next, which it's not going to work right now, you'd go over here to upload. And if you clicked on that, it'd compile the sketch and then upload it. But since I don't have a board plugged in, so it's saying the COM4 here, um, there's no device in it. So, which is where I have my Arduino download uh, set to. So let me unplug my mic real quick here and okay. just see if I can download this so we can actually see this example. And Gary says this makes... Uh makes sense so far so and pathfire c plus uh, plus is really easy code to learn and it lets you know when you you write something bad in the program yeah it does it's and it is it is relatively easy to learn i mean a lot of people get intimidated by it but it is probably one of the easier codes to learn in all the different codes of course that's a code guy uh saying that too that c plus is really easy so don't don't let that intimidate you either um so yeah uh adi olsen's also say make all the delays slightly different or make two flash at the same time on each to to really mess with people yes and uh, really you can do whatever you want on this um there there's all kinds of ways we're just trying to show you a basic way to get you you going on this and then you know the world's a limit your imagination's a limit on that and if you do something different, send send us a, a video of it or, or a picture of it. We'd love to show it and share it on the podcast too. Yeah, and you can do that. You can send us an email with it through at gadgettalkpodcast at gmail.com or you can share it to our uh, our Instagram and that's at, at gadgettalkpodcast. So you can just tag us in that on Instagram and we'd love to see what you guys are creating on this. So yes, love absolutely. absolutely love to see that. Yes. So um, if you look here, it says done uploading. So I unplugged my mic. I uploaded it real quick. And so now what we're going to do is go ahead and plug it into the board. And we're going to take a look here in the, cam okay. the build cam and see how it came out. So we should have what? Seven, seven reds. Um, Correct. Seven reds. One of, what? One of one each blue, of the other. One green. So I'm going to put the, the board that I uploaded in. And so this is just here using a, um, a mini USB port. Right, that's not yeah. It's a mini USB port. They come in different ones. They have micros on them. There's several different types, um, but uh, that's what I uploaded it with. And the, usually these boards will come with a a, a cable to upload with. So right. I want to make sure that this is lined up correctly. We're gonna go ahead and install that. So we have that in. Now let's add our batteries. We will once the batteries are in. Now the way I made this, I didn't put it on or off button on this because I'm imagining when you build this for the cache, you're going to have cashers bring batteries. And right. so um, once the batteries are in, it's going to run the program and I'll show you how to add a delay if you want to. So you'll kind of have to add a delay so they know when the sequence starts over again. Otherwise it would just keep doing the code and it would confuse them, right? The, the flashing. Right. Now, could you run this? I know you're using four AA batteries, but could you do this also off, a nine, off of a 9-volt? You could. Um, so the, these boards can take uh, 9 volts all the way up to 12-volt. Uh, okay. Or, uh, I'm sorry, 5-volt <laughs> uh, to 12-volt. 
on them. Okay. Um, and I run 12 volt on several of them, but again, I think the double A's are the best power usage. And uh, you right. can go back to our podcast where we actually talk about internal powered batteries on Dave covers that very well. So you see our three LEDs here. Okay. So Red. in fact here, let me, let me, I'm going to hit the reset. So there's a reset button on there. Arduino that will start it over. So I'm going to hit that real quick. We're going to start over. So there's one flash in red and I put it on for way too long. <laughs> yeah, five five seconds. seconds, one second, one second. Oh, five seconds. So we're yeah, at we'll three. <laughs> three, four. four. This would be a really easy one to find. Okay, come five. On. I never do a five second flash. Yeah, and Tom said, hey, uh, maybe. Uh, have the LEDs blink four times together to let people know it's going to repeat. So, and this would be another way that you could do these as Morse code as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if you saw that the last two were for a second and then off for half a second and then back on for a second. Um, so those two went through really quick. So that's the code we just wrote up there with the, the delay that we had programmed there. Now let's go ahead and change that. So they actually flash at different times. And again, okay. you could use four LEDs, which most locks are four, but the one I'm actually using only has three, so that's why I did three LEDs. So I'm going to go ahead and remove my battery here okay. and take out the Arduino. Well, actually, I don't have to do that. I can actually, the nice thing about this is you could just plug the Arduino in okay. to the, the board here. And So let's go back to the screen. Okay, we're back on the screen. All right. So um, what we're going to do here is... I'm going to change some of these. Now, you can go through and just adjust these to whatever LED you want it to be. So if you want this to be, let's say, three. But it's going to mess up your... Your uh, your code on the other side where it your, says red. Your notes that you have here. So we could actually just take those out. But that's, that's up to you. So um, I'm not going to worry about taking those comments out. But this is a way to do it. Or you can cut and paste randomly if you want to. Um, we're going to do is go back to one. So we're going to do one, three, one, and then we'll go to two. Now we're going to change these from five seconds because that is way too long. We'll go to one second. All of them. Yeah. Yeah. That was huge. So I was kind of, sorry. I got caught up in reading the, uh, the chat here for a second. Gary was saying, if you search careful around Audi Olson's gadget caches, uh, you sometimes find a battery. Oh, nice. That's yeah. Cool. So, uh, and Gary says it's like a bonus hide. So, and <laughs> what could you, what you could do is what if the, that cache, the, you get to play with the cache. It's, and that the whole cache is actually a red herring and the actual cache is a fake battery on the ground. So oh, that's, that's cool. I was just and, thinking I know. have, I, I have a fake battery and that's why that's the only, that, that'd be the only way I can think of that it would be kind of funny to use that besides having it in a gadget cache as a dead battery. So yeah, and I'm looking forward to finding some of his caches next year at the, the, uh, at Mingo Mingo. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, event. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, what, isn't he like the fifth highest favorite points in the U S or something like that? I don't know. I think he is right now. For his caches. So let us know in the chat. That, let us know, or Adi Olson, let us know if you are. Is he in there? It's really cool. Congratulations. Yeah, he's in there. So Okay, so let's see here. So I changed some of these, and now obviously I don't remember. We obviously don't have seven red. Right, um, I'm going to answer this question. Uh, Dire Wolf uh, asked, uh, was the smaller board hooked up to the computer somehow when he was doing the programming? Yes, it was hooked up to a, uh, using the USB going through there. Um, so, but uh, Chad had to unplug his microphone because uh, not having enough USBs on his computer. So yeah, so it was plugged into there and it, when you upload it, it goes through the USB. So to answer that question and Adi Olson says, yes, he is perks of living uh, being there. He, he perceives perks of living next to bingo. Uh, so he'll, yeah, he'll uh, get in all those different caches when we get out there. Yes, I'm looking forward to that. So Gary says uh, he always forgets to bring batteries. So I always leave it for the next absent-minded cashier. So 
So Gary always leaves his batteries next to the, the caches. So there's always one of those ready. So I'm just counting my blinks here. Okay. So the, so Chad's counting his blinking cache as he's going through this. Dude, <laughs> I just I like <laughs> to put comments in here just so I know. And I could have done it all up above without even having to do each one, but I gotta count them. So um this is gonna be yeah. an easy four, three, two. One. So um, now what I did here is because I changed the LED that's going to flash, now it's going to go in a different sequence on there. Okay. So um, now there's so many different ways we can do this. I'm going to spend all night talking about how you can leave actually one on and then flash another one, which would confuse people because you still count the one that's still on. And then another one would flash that you have to count. So, which is right. really simple so because, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was just saying, you can make this code as this combination on this as simple or as hard as you want to, just real quickly in the code itself. Yes. So right now, this is what I did. And I'm going to take, they're, they're on for a second, and I'm going to actually change this to a half a second off. Uh, off so 500. Um, and we're just going to randomly do that. And if you wanted to, you can randomly do, um, we'll do a high here at 500 at a half a second. Um, I think that should be that should go through pretty quick. That should flash, and then it's off here. So right here, we're going to start over with our code. Okay. So if you want to, you can do. I don't do a five second. So if you did a ten second delay, which would be ten thousand, then they would know that there's a stop in in the code. It would be off, and then it would start over. Um, okay. And that should let them know that hey, okay, it's it's time to start counting over again. Um. So let's go ahead, and I'm going to unplug my mic and download. Here. All right, and I'm gonna go back to the build cam. So we can see how, if you can, I don't know if it'll, if you can reach it, Chad, when you do put in your the USB. So we'll see, hopefully, see it, how it plugs into there. Now, when Chad comes on, if there's any questions in the chat on how this is coming together, just let us know. Uh, we really like to hear from you on that. So I'm going to have, so what we're going to do, so as I use, so he's got it plugged in now and we're going to go back into the build screen as he's going to come up. It's going to run the, uh, compiling the sketch. And as it compiles, you can see, okay, it's done complete. And now he's going to upload it to the nano itself. And it is there. And if we go back to the build cam with the nano itself, you'll, when we see the LEDs and when the battery gets plugged in. Now, the reason why he's got the battery unplugged right now is because the USB will actually give power to the nano itself. Yes. So now there's no power to the nano and you don't want to have them both plugged in at the same time because that kind of will screw things up. Okay. So now we have our code that we wrote, which is 432. So four red three green and two blue if i'm correct so we'll plug we'll go ahead and turn it on and you'll see it flash and then now it's if you see it, how it's rotating the colors and i have it really simple i have my one second i think one is a half a second yep so yep. as we're going through this uh, yep. the and now colors it's 10 are seconds off so people should know okay when it starts over we're starting our count over again Okay. Now, could you do this? I mean, I know we have just one of each color, but could you do this with like five reds, two greens, three blues, or different combination of there? Could you do it that way? You mean at one time on a flat? You mean put different right. LEDs into the terminal blocks? You're actually having a whole right. bunch kind of one time? Oh, absolutely. I, I have several caches uh, like that. Uh, let's see if I have one here. I have one here next to me, actually. I can show here when we're done. Okay. Um, so that is um, how you can intermix the LEDs, the flashing of the LEDs. Um, and what I would do is I wouldn't leave it one second. I would really have some at half a second. I would never go more than a second. I even think a second is probably too long. Um, right. But you can go for a quarter of a second, a tenth of a second if you want to make it really hard where it's just a quick flash. Um, but let's go back over to our uh, screen here and take a look at how we can actually have one stay on. Well, another one flashes, and it's really, really simple to do. Um, so we'll just do this here. We'll do it on the third one down, which will be LED one. 
here. Um, we're going to go ahead and what we're going to do is it's going to go high. Oh, we have that at 500 of a second on the high. So let's pick a different one. Um, we'll go with the LED2 here. So what I'm going to do on this, I'm going to cut that out there. And then I'm going to paste it in after the next light. And you could do this several lights down if you want. Right. Um, and then we get rid of this space. Um, so um, what it's going to do is now this one's going to go, this LED here, number two here, is going to go high for a second, which we're actually going to change that to like two seconds. It's going to be um, 2,000. Yeah, two thousand, and it's going to go high, and then and then next the LED one is going to go high, so it will turn on at the same time, and then LED one will turn back off. Um, and let's go with it's on high for five hundredth of a second. Yeah, so and you're going to get some different uh, random. Some will be on at the same time, so that kind of throws everything off. Now, Tom has, as you're setting that up, Tom had a question. Would you hook multiple LEDs into the same block, or do they each need their own space? If you're <laughs> – this is one of my most popular caches is what I do, and it's the easiest thing. It's this exact same code with 40 LEDs. And so I only have five different LEDs flashing, but I have so many different colors hooked to it. So it looks like a whole bunch at one time, and it's actually only four terminals that you're using, only four outputs uh, that you're using on it. So, um, yeah, I would just hook a whole bunch to one, and that's what I've done, and I've never had an issue with it. Now, would you use the same terminal board, or would you use just a uh, bounce off into like a, a type of breadboard of some sort? I uh, These wires are pretty small. Um, what I typically do um, on, the, on these wires and... You know, I could pull one apart here actually and show you. I actually solder them all together and then have one piece of 22 gauge stranded to come out and then that goes into the terminal board. Okay. All right. right? That makes so they're sense. They're all connected as one. And I can I have one really close here. I'll I can show you. Okay. So um let me uh, let me unplug this. Let me let me look at this code, make sure I'm reading it right. So the LED is gonna go high. Where are we at here? Hi, hi. Good question, Tom. That's a really great question. Uh, any more questions in the chat room, just let us know and we'll get to those as well. So as we're working out this code, so um, we're going LED two high for three seconds. So that what's again, that's 3000. So it's going to stay on longer than the, uh, it'll see. I just want to make sure it stays on long enough. Now, the nice thing about this and be able to, to download it right to your Arduino. In fact, you don't have to use the battery if you if you don't have to unplug your mic. You just run the power through the through the the port USB port, um, right. and you can just keep changing and uploading it as you go. And it's really really quick and easy. Um, so, but since I have to keep doing it, but so you'll mess around with it. You can figure it out. Um, there's so many different ways to do it. But let me go ahead and unplug here. I'm going to upload this real quick. Okay. So as we're seeing, Bill Cam is getting plugged back in. All right. See, as you see, the battery's pulled out. And the sketch is coming up. So in the chat room, let us know how everybody's enjoying this build. Is this something that you guys would like to try on your own? Um, is there anybody building this with us tonight as we're going through this? Or are you just going to kind of watch this back on the replay and um, see it then and, try and do it at that, that point. So just let us know. All right, so it is done uploading. And coming back to... I have to keep going back and remember to unmute my mic. Because <laughs> when I unplug my mic, it mutes it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put these out here, the LEDs. So in okay. theory, at some point, you should have one that will stay on. Let me reset it. All right, so now we're seeing it flash. Now they're in focus. That one stayed on. Oh, see, there's the green stayed on or blue. Yeah, it's hard to I tell. Probably, three seconds is probably way too long on that. So that's kind of cool. It. That's 
that's really cool how you so you can multi change it up a little bit to kind of confuse everybody. And like you were saying, if you had a bigger one with a bunch of different of the same color LEDs, that would really throw people off. Yes. And uh, you can use see uh, that one flash, but I have it go a lot quicker. And I'll show you guys here in a minute how I do it on a different cache. So that's pretty basic there. Um, not much to it. You can see that the build itself is a really simple build to do. You don't even need to solder. I did all this off of the connections, the, the tin uh, wires, that the LEDs that came pre-wired. We need a terminal board, uh, a nano that I already, you know, the ones I put on the link were already pre-soldered. And then just a, a four uh, AA battery holder. And that is it. And, and a standard screwdriver is what this board takes. And, you know, you can make a very creative cache that way. Um, one right. thing you may want to think about is what do I put that in when I put it in the cache, right? Right. And um, that's what Dire Wolf was asking. He said, okay, I'd like to try it. Um, what's the next step as far as attaching it to into a container? So a couple of different things. If you do it in an ammo can and it's pretty much sealed, I've used these project boxes here and I've mounted them in here in this. And then I'll drill a couple holes for the LEDs to come out of and then silicone around the holes. Um, and then you pop this up back on the silicone around the holes is for me. You can use silicone around this because this is not a sealed case. Uh, and then same thing when you drill holes for this silicone it, and then you can hot glue this in place uh, or double sided tape, put the cap on, you'll be good to go. And then these you would drill if you're doing a birdhouse through the wood um, or whatever you're using to, uh, to stick the LEDs out. Um, would be cool birdhouses if you had these with LEDs all around it, like on three sides. Maybe we should do this on our show. If you had LEDs on three sides, a whole bunch of them, say 20 per side, and you had to right. count the colors, you'd have to go from side to side and then add it up. That's a good idea, actually. We should do that. Yeah, we should do that one. <laughs> so um, so uh, here's what? a question. Here's a question. Uh, Dan's asking, when sitting in the cache between fines, is the board drawing power from the batteries? It would be. And that's why this one would require somebody to bring the batteries with them. Um, there are ways that you could do it. And you, if you wanted it to, if you had like in a birdhouse and you wanted it on the inside, you could put in like a reed switch. So when they open up the door, then it starts flashing with a delay or however you want to do it. That's one way that you could do it. Um, so it'd have the internal power, but the easiest way for this one is just to have the cash finder bring the batteries with them. Yeah. And on this, it wouldn't burn any, burn any power because the cashers bring in the batteries. So they're providing the power. Right. It's only pulling power when it's on, when the batteries are in. Um, and so it's actually fairly simple. You can do a, a momentary on off switch if you want to. I have them on a couple of mine. Um, and it's only pulling power when the switch is pushed. Right. So the batteries will last a long time. But again, that's there's several different ways. We went over a, a, um, on one of our shows uh, switches and latches and stuff. And so you could actually see on there the different ways you can do it or send us an email um, and we can show you and, you know, maybe bring it up in a show later on. Right. Um, and there's our email, gadgettalkpodcast at gmail.com. Yes. Uh, another container. So if, if it's going to be in the weather, this one's not really weatherproof, right? This is just a project box. Um, but if it's going in an ammo can, it typically would be okay. I've not had an issue. Um, these are weatherproof uh, project boxes here. They come in several. I have 10 different sizes of them. Um, okay. Wh whatever you want to do uh, on those. And what the difference is these actually have a seal on them. So there's actually a rubber. Put that underneath the camera. There's a rubber seal. And so if you did drill holes through the side, make sure you do silicone it to um, stop any water moisture from getting in. Right. And Dyer Wolf says he would see the battery holder would be outside the container somehow and the finer brings the batteries. Right. That's one way. Or if you had it on the inside of um, like a, a birdhouse, you open up the door and you can just install the batteries inside. So um, you can do it that way. And I've done that on several different ones of my caches as well. Yeah. And so this is a weatherproof one here that actually comes with a seal or a gasket that you actually put in here. And then once you screw it down, it all seals up nice and tight. It's weatherproof in theory. Something can always go wrong, I guess. Uh, and then one <laughs> thing I always change uh, on my screws just to show people is one of the things I found, especially lately, is people like to take my caches apart. I don't know why. 
but they like to take the screws out. Um, so instead of using these screws here, um, I use a lot of security screws. Okay. Um, let's pull them out here real quick. Okay, so they have... I didn't plan this as obviously as part of the podcast. I didn't have it ready. This screw here is a T-bit, right? And right. this has a stud in the middle. So a regular T-bit wouldn't fit. You have to have a special screw head okay. to actually unscrew that. Yeah, that's um, really great. And so I use that on. And then um, I use also, which are not as good as that one there. Oh, am I? Yeah, you're in focus. Yeah, it's there. A dragon here? No, you're there. Okay. Oh, can, am I delayed? No, no, you're fine. I don't, well, I can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. My computer like stopped and paused. So, okay. So, um, there's all different types of security screws. If you look them up, you can, you can find them. So that's one way to do it. So let me show you some caches that I've built that will answer some, a lot of those questions that you have. All right. So as Chad's getting that, just go ahead and start putting, fill in the chat with the questions that you may have on any other, the containers or anything like that. Just go ahead and put those in the chat and we'll get to them. Let's move that up so we can actually see it. So this is one that sits in an ammo can here. It's not in it right now. It's an acrylic one that I make. Um, I actually did this to show at an event um, on how to make it. Um, so this is one that has four inputs on that. So it's the same thing. We have four, but they're hooked up to several, several lights. Um, yeah, just a few batteries lights mounted there. on top. Yeah. So the ammo can, this would sit inside an ammo can. You'd open up the lid. And then your battery would be your battery that you'd have to bring your own batteries, but the case is here. So you actually have to add batteries, right? Bring your own batteries. So once you install the batteries, it starts their Arduino. And then it starts flashing. So you can see here that they have to count them, but there's so many different lights to go on different. And there's, you only have to count three colors, but there's actually five colors there. <laughs> so, and you probably can't see some are like uh, off white and some are white pure white right. so uh and i think there's a couple pinks um just to mess with people so you have to count certain colors but this is really simple so this is exactly what we just built and this is one of my favorite caches that people find they they really like this cache so if you take a look at it let me unplug the battery here so i have power going to it um and yeah, i left this clear wires. so people can <laughs> see it um, cause it was for an event to show people on how to build creative caches. Um, find a good size screwdriver here. And the way I mounted the nano in here, actually looking at it, I'm like, I can't believe I did it that way, but <laughs> it's just, I mean, it's, it's just, just sitting it's in there. It's just sitting in there. Yeah. <laughs> this was, I, yeah. I see it there in the back end of it now. It looks like I soldered everything right to the board. So it's not been on a, a uh, terminal board, which is fine with me because I can, if I have to do maintenance, I can unsolder it and resolder it. But um, I was probably trying to save room when I built this. Is I think is what it must have been. Right. I, was, I built this a couple years ago, so now it sits and collects dust. Yeah, I have a few that are like that too, waiting for them to go out. Yeah. So, one more screw here, guys. Yeah, this was made not to get out once you get it. Yeah, there. this was for a demo for a, a show for an event. So, um, you can see here, you're asking about all the wires. So, you have all your, your positive wires, which are the black. Okay. Right. And they run into. Uh, I have five different lights that flash at different times on this one. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Um, and then the grounds, which are the colored ones, 
<laughs> all run to a big colored one into the grounds. So anyways, that's it. Really, really simple. It's a lot of wires in there. Right. Um, that you and I see that you in. have, unlike one of the yellow leads there, I see that you have some blues in there as well. Blue lights? Yes. Yes, Looks I have like. yellows, whites, blues, red, green. I know there's a pink and there's an off-white one as well. And well, the off-white one is a white and yellow wire, I believe. And a white is white and black, and yellow is yellow and black. Yeah. So there's so there's tons of them. And you know, when you buy LEDs, you can get packs. Right. I'll show you one. Right. Here. So uh, Ryan says you can use it again at Mingo as a demo. So it'll get used to he wants you to bring it out again or make another one there. Yeah, that'd be fun. So yeah, Chad's going through his drawers <laughs> trying to find some other stuff to kind of show us here. Too much but, stuff. There we go. <laughs> I really think that okay. looks really cool. So you can get packs of LEDs like this, pre-wired, and you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different colors of LEDs. So you can really mess with people if you want. Yeah. Okay. And so let me throw put this away. Go ahead, Derek. And what cacher doesn't want to mess with people on trying to get into their cache sometimes, <laughs> especially on these smart caches, right? Yeah. I want people to have fun. I don't want to frustrate them. That's just my way of doing right. it. Everybody likes to make caches different ways. Um, and I don't want them to destroy my cache trying to get in because I've had a couple of people do that now recently. But um, yeah. It's up to you, however you want to build it. Right, and like I said, this, the, the code that we did tonight, you can make that as difficult or as easy as you want, and it just really depends on how you want to do um, your wires, and you'd have to... So, if it was a blue, if you had to figure out on that one, if you had to figure out the yellow, green, and red, the blues would just be in there as red herrings or of the other colors, even though it may come on at the same time that the red comes on, the blue, red and blue comes on at the same time, but you're only having to count the red. So, or I think I said the right colors that time, right? But yeah, you just, if you have those red herrings in there, so that would just, however you want to do your code on this is, would be really great. And how you want to do it as, make it as easy or as hard as you want, that's up to you. But it's just a real simple code to put in there. So are there any other questions that you are having out in the chat room? Just let us know. Uh, now Chad's pulled in an ammo can and who does not like finding an ammo can? Yeah. Um, so you think I had this, had this ready if I was doing a show on this tonight. Um, so <laughs> this is exactly what we built tonight. Three LEDs. So ammo can, you open it up and same thing. I have a box there. You bring your own batteries. Um, you put the battery in and it actually has the LEDs here that will flash. And so you can see they're flashing at different times and then it stops and starts over. And so you have to count them and that'll give you the code to the lock. Uh, and then once you get the code, you open it up and you got the cash. And this is where I've used, since it's inside the ammo can, I've actually bolted that down very securely and glued it to the inside of the can. Uh, and then all wires just run straight up through that box. You can't even see them into right. the, onto the top of the can. So no one can, in theory, mess with it too much. Yeah, in theory. Um, <laughs> I really like Someone's how clean find that a way. looks. Yeah, I really and, like how clean that looks. And I really like that uh, style lock that you have on there. I've gotten some myself um, and have not used them yet. Yeah, the, then, the barrel locks, I think they're called, is it? Yeah. Barrel come, yeah, something like that. Uh, and then this is one that my, my wife actually, she came up with the puzzle. I just made the cache. So it actually, this is the description the cache has. And it says count red, blue, and green lights. The correct combination will be the numerical order in numerical order from highest to lowest. Uh, and then if you're correct, the cash will unlock. So pretty simple instructions. You can you don't have to have that on here, um, but it, it helps a lot um, to have it on there. But you can have it in your description as well. Page. So yeah, really fun cash. So this is exactly what we did tonight. Uh, and then we, as you can see with the other caches, you can. You can change it up any way you want to. All right. So here's we Dire Wolf is like, I'd like to more info on the box inside the ammo can and the lock that goes with it. So maybe in one of these next builds, we'll go through and how you create 
those um, your acrylic yeah, boxes. So I make all these. These are acrylic, so they're actually waterproof. Well, if the can fills up with water, it's it's waterproof up to the lip of the. Or let's go this way. The lip of the can. Then it's not waterproof anymore. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I it's they're all everything is all glued um, with acrylic glue, which is it actually well it melts the acrylic together. So what I find is actually stronger in the seams than it is sometimes in the field. So. Um, but yeah, these are nice boxes to make really, really simple to make. They can be a little expensive because acrylic can be expensive. Right. Um, but again, that's up to you. Even the hinges, all acrylic, it's, they're all clear. Uh, and then I just paint them or I'll put some kind of vinyl wrap or something on them. Right. And that the, the barrel lock, um, I will put a link tonight in the, uh, on the cash page building page for the barrel locks themselves. So, um, like I said, give me a little bit uh, after the podcast tonight, and I will get the um, update the with the barrel lock, and we'll get the code on there as well. So that way, you guys can go ahead and download the basic code, and it will help you out when you go to building this cache. I thought I had an extra one of the barrel locks to show, but uh, I don't. But it's it's a um, really simple lock; it just screws on there and then you set your code you put a pin through there and you can set the code to what you want release the pin and then you're good to go um i just added an acrylic piece lip here to catch right. it on um i like this design a little bit better than the design in this box um this box i did a different design sorry no oh, you're good um this one has a lip on the outside uh of it uh and i think that this this brown one has a cleaner look than the one with the extra lip on it um, right and it also i had to add glue some acrylic on here to make it deeper for the barrel lock versus this one i can actually put that lip wherever i wanted it to go so just a couple things from building it right so perfect so and then uh Engineer 42 says, I've bolted two cans together, one in the puzzle and the other in the lock uh, is locked for the log and swag. So you could do, you can break it up. And like I said, we're just giving a basic um, way that you can do these. And it just it's opens up to your imagination to what you can do with these builds. Yeah, so I'm thinking what he did is he bolted two cans together and the, the one that had the log book had this kind of a lock on the outside, right. With a combination lock. So that's actually right. a really good idea. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. It's almost, you could, <laughs> you could actually do that. Um, I saw one of these this last weekend. It is the, um, what was, I'm trying to remember. It's like the shortest, um, multi cache or the easiest multi cache ever. It had two containers uh, glued together. One said stage one and the other said stage two. Hmm. And what the note in stage one says, Oh, go to stage two. <laughs> Turn it over and and there and it was a multi cache. So really, I thought a multi had to have two locations, but well, whatever. I don't rotate know. it. You, you can right. hold it and walk five feet away and come back. I mean, it's I it's yeah. it's at different stages, but that's what it was a, the easiest cool. multi cache in the world. So you could do that with the ammo can. Um, so Ryan says uh, over here. He goes, "I love uh, Bounce Bounce's fake camera." Yeah. So uh, I don't want to give away people see it, but I have a fake camera outside of a, a, a building. Um, and you have to take an RFID card and scan it somewhere on the building to find out where the lights, lights flash. And this exact same code we just used. When you scan the RFID, it activates the LEDs. And then you have to figure out where it flashes, which is in a security camera up on the top of the building or up on the building in the eaves and just count the lights from there. So yeah. Well, thanks Ryan. That's really cool. And once again, like I said, you can use this basic code and use it with a whole bunch of different things and add different elements to it. So, well, Chad, yeah. I think this is really cool. Um, really, I really enjoy this. I learned some, some little bit of stuff tonight too. So that's always good. Um, I have a little saying, if I, the day I go without learning something is the day that I die. So yeah. this was a lot of fun, but, uh, so why Great. don't you tell us what we have coming up next week? So next week we have, um, you're going to put me on the spot here. I for, 
forget his Tricassius. name. Yeah, I just think of, he has the same name as me, so I always think of Chad. Uh, Tricassius <laughs> uh, coming um, out here, and uh, or he's going to come on and do a show, and he's going to talk a little about some of his caches, just do an interview. So join us then. Ask any questions you have of his. Um, if you haven't seen any of his caches, uh, the geocaching vlogger, I believe, yep. did a video on his caches. Uh, he's been Call doing a like, whole series on them up there in Gilby. Yeah, oh, yeah, like it's the been Disneyland awesome. of of uh, the North or something like that. I think he something called it. Like, yeah, yeah. So um, take a look at those. Um, it's going to be fun. I'm really looking forward to it and excited about it. Um, join in then, and then if you if anybody has any questions, ideas for uh, some episodes or some builds, uh, send us an email at gadgettalkpodcast at gmail dot com. Um, and then if you want to see some of the stuff we're doing, which hasn't been too many posts lately um, because of work, but you can follow us on Instagram at the uh, gadget talk podcast. Uh, right. Yes. Uh, so, yes. And then also if you, to find the build parts and to get the code that I'm going to be putting on there here shortly, and I'm going to add that barrel um, lock on there as well. You can go to find it at the August builds and it's at geocache talk.com GT dash aug dash build. So there's, you can go on there or you can go onto the website and go up there to podcast, go down and get talk. And then you'll see there for August build as well. There's that's another way that you can get to the website itself to where the, the parts list is and also where we're going to have the code up there. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Joshua was on and he uh, just confirmed what the episode was called Disneyland of geocaching. So yes, go on there and check that out uh, before next week's show. And, um, be pretty fun to uh, talk to him and come on and ask him any questions you want. See if we can uh, stump him on anything. Yeah, I'm looking forward to because he's got some really cool caches. I've been really enjoying watching uh, Joshua's uh, videos on on those up there at Gilby and adding more lists to my geocaching bucket list. To tell you that much. So yeah. But all right, guys, thank you for joining us tonight. Send us an email. Follow us on Instagram. Uh, go check out the build page. And uh, let us know. Love to hear from you this week if what's going on. And we will join you next week with Tricassius. All right, guys. Good night. Good night, guys. Good night.